there is a war. It's happening now. It will decide the fate of humanity. The time to choose sides has come. We are the resistance. We are the info war. Welcome to the Info Wars Nightly News. I'm your host, Jakari Jackson. It's October 8th, 2014, and let's get straight into our news tonight. By now, you've probably heard that Thomas Eric Duncan has died in the Dallas hospital, a very unfortunate situation, and our thoughts and prayers do go out to his family. He died earlier this morning, so we were told. And the thing about this is, is now that we have a confirmed victim here in the United States of America, what are we going to do to combat this? Because we see travel sanctions in the African continent, we see parts of Europe putting out travel sanctions as well, but we refuse to do that here at home. But something that people are talking about and something that is a possible, I won't say a remedy, but some type of reaction to this is temperature screenings. Now we have this article, Feds announce airport fever screenings for Ebola, which can be beaten with ibuprofen. Temperature screenings of passengers arriving from West Africa will soon begin at O'Hare International, Kennedy International, Dole's International, Hartsfield Jackson International, and Newark Liberty International, federal officials announced today. But Sean Kaufman, who previously worked with the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention during the SARS outbreak, said, the fever screening instruments run low and aren't that accurate, he said. People can take ibuprofen to reduce their fever enough to pass the screening, and why wouldn't they? And exactly right, why wouldn't they? Now, when it comes to airport security, uh, especially with this Ebola thing, you know, I don't really fault the airport personnel. You know, what do they really have to work with? You know, these little temperature screenings that can be easily fooled. You now, I'm more concerned with the TSA sticking their hands down my pants because the U.S. wants to fund Al Qaeda, but that's a whole different deal. So, you know, what exactly can be done at these airports? I don't know. And that's the question, you know, why aren't travel sanctions being in place, uh, being put in place by the United States government? But let's talk about something uh, a little closer to home. Talk, we talked about the situation in Africa. Let's talk about the uh, Ebola cases happening right now in the state of Texas. We've seen a Dallas deputy who went to the home of uh, Mr. Duncan, his home here in the U.S., and he is uh, now being quarantined under a possible Ebola uh, concern. And the headline reads, could take 48 hours to confirm if deputy has Ebola. And this is Star uh, Sergeant Michael Monning, and he accompanied uh, health officials into the uh, home of Duncan. And now it, people are very concerned that he may in fact have Ebola himself. And this is the situation. Because you send these guys in, you know, an officer, you know, he's just following the commands he gets over the radio. Hey, we need you to go to this guy's house. He said, okay, I'll go in there. And now he could potentially have Ebola. But we had a chance to speak to our own police chief here today in the city of Austin, Art Acevedo. And this is what the InfoWars crew had to ask him. Listen, what we're going to do here is we're going to take, we're going to be a security team to make sure that we secure uh, a perimeter. Uh, we have processes in place where mental health, uh, mental health, uh, where uh, health professionals uh, will be taking the lead in terms of doing those kind of type of things. So our protocols are in place. We have a multidisciplinary uh, plan in place where uh, the health department uh, here in the county uh, and the state will take the lead and we'll just provide law enforcement support as needed. So that was the response from the Austin police chief. Now some White House reporters commented on this issue as well and their comments weren't exactly as eloquent. The, the most interesting thing is the travel and stuff. Yeah, we're screwed. Which is what we're I'm, just, I'm feeling fluish. Okay. Just so you know, so I'm going to no, give you a big no, kiss. No, 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 I don't want your kiss. This DC test comes back positive. I'm doing it. This what? DC test. I got it. I'll be doing it. Oh, yeah. that's right. That's that, that stupid, we had a stupid mic. Maybe I sound like the way you. Yeah, did you hear that, everyone? Yeah. <laughs> We go now to some ISIS news with a U.S. representative claiming that ISIS has been caught crossing the border. Because you remember this summer when InfoWars was talking about this, when we were going down to the border, we were talking to the emergency managers. Joe Biggs was running across the border with al-Qaeda flags and all that stuff. Oh, you guys are fear mongers. You're doing this. You're doing that. There's no real threat. You got to leave the borders open for the kids. And I do feel sorry for the kids. I feel sorry for the adults as well. The people coming from these uh, very uh, bad situations in whatever country they came from. But, you know, that's not a reason to have a wide open border. Yeah, the kids come in and they, you know, they need help and all that. But you also have the terrorists that come around. You know, you can't just have all the good. You have to take the bad along with it. You need to shut down these borders, have a border, uh, a real border patrol down there because the border patrol is too busy changing diapers and heating up bottles. And for all the people who say the border is racist, it's a 
symbol of oppression, all this and that. There's a border on Mexico. There's a border on Canada. If I want to go to China, they're going to ask, like, hey, what are you doing over here? But I say all that to say this. Let's hear this clip from Duncan Hunter. And the Border Patrol, they just let ISIS, uh, ISIS members come no, across they, the border? No, they uh, caught them at the border. Therefore, we know that ISIS is coming across the border. And if they catch five or ten of them, then you know there's going to be dozens more that did not get caught by the Border Patrol. Ferguson, Missouri is back in the news with this report. Military preparing to respond to Ferguson riots. A reporter with Daily Koss who says he was told by a source within the Missouri military that troops are being prepared to deal with riots in Ferguson and St. Louis in the aftermath of an expected acquittal in the case of Officer Darren Wilson. Sean King, who has over 75,000 followers on Twitter, revealed that how he was told some incredibly disturbing information by a Missouri military source, how in a meeting with military commanders in his unit, he was told that they needed to prepare for riots in Ferguson and in St. Louis very soon. Now, we have seen people threatening to uh, have riots at Cardinals games, at uh, St. Louis Rams games. Hopefully that will not happen. Uh, but we have seen the military already down in the streets of Ferguson with the uh, National Guard out there. So what's going to happen uh, after this uh, verdict comes down, whether it's this year, next year? People have not forgotten. Uh, not, I am concerned about that because we don't need any more riots, no more looting. But we also don't need any more police brutality or a reason to have military on the streets. So, you know, everybody be on your best behavior and hopefully uh, the military won't have any uh, justification at all to be out there. Now, let's talk about something that's uh, very interesting to me. You know, comic books are in the news a lot nowadays and we see, you know, all this scandal, all that scandal. But now there's a really positive story that I was very happy to hear about. Superman is a supporter of the Second Amendment. This is Dean Cain. He had played Superman years ago and he has a very interesting tale of how he came to love the Second Amendment. I openly discuss politics if people want to. If they don't want to, I won't put my politics on them, but I'll ask them why they're so against this or so for this or what would they do in this situation? You know, you're in your, you're so they're completely against, you know, guns, right? Well, what happens at four o'clock in the morning when someone's banging on your door, as happened to me in the past, and I had no weapon in the house, I was terrified. I'm a big, strong guy. I, my knees were buckling. I was like, oh my gosh, uh, I'm armed to the teeth now. At four o'clock in the morning, come bang on my door. I, my knees won't buck. And I really like what he said there because he's this big strapping guy. He played Superman, but he admits, you know, somebody came to his door in the early morning hours. He was unarmed and he didn't know what to do. You know, calling the police, you know, good police response time is about two minutes. But after that, he said he's armed to the teeth and, you know, the man of steel is packing steel and that's all right with me. Now, our last group tonight in our report, uh, they don't have supervision. They don't have heat vision. Actually, they have no vision at all, but that's not stopping them from the right to bear arms. All of the eight people using firearms today are blind or visually impaired, so their instructor... And I'm going to go around to each person. Chandler Bullard helped them envision the 22 caliber rifle by touching it. Okay, that's your barrel. Bullard knows what it's like to have to work a little harder than able-bodied people because he has limitations of his own. He works for Northeast Passage, a nonprofit giving people with disabilities the ability to try something new. And for all the people who want to complain about blind people shooting guns, as you saw in the video, the instructor was holding the gun for them at a professional shooting range, shooting down range with dirt and other things to stop any stray bullets. There's nothing wrong with that. Even if you went out there and you could see, you'd probably miss a target if you didn't know what you're doing. So it's not a big deal. This is a group of people. They go out and they enjoy life. They horseback ride even though they're blind. They shoot even though they're blind. They just go out and have a good time. You should try to do the same. Well, that's it for this segment of the Info Wars Nightly News. But stay tuned because after this break, we'll have a special report from Joe Biggs detailing the response to the Ebola pandemic and also the Info Wars timeline documenting ISIS in this country. Stay tuned. DNA force. When cells become toxic, they die early and aging sets in. DNA force. No one has put together a formula that focuses directly on brain health, nerve growth factors, and optimizing your cellular energy at the same time. Just one of the key compounds. BioPQQ is backed by major clinical studies. DNA force. We now have the synergistic solution. Secure your DNA force today at InfoWarsLife.com or call toll-free 888-253-3139. DNA force. 
The globalist social engineers are not just targeting us with propaganda. They are manipulating our genetics. We are being targeted at every level by estrogen mimickers that lower our testosterone and other hormones and natural compounds that the body needs. After consulting top doctors, nutritionists, pharmacists, and others, we have developed what I believe is the ultimate non-GMO organic super male vitality formula sourced from powerful organic herbs and then concentrated for maximum potency. Super male vitality was developed to activate your body's own natural processes instead of using synthetic chemicals. Super male vitality by InfoWars Life is so powerful that I only take half the recommended dose. For a limited time, we are offering 15% off Super Male Vitality at InfoWarsLife.com to introduce you to this powerful supplement. Visit InfoWarsLife.com today to secure your Super Male Vitality. InfoWarsLife.com. I'm Joe Biggs with InfoWars.com. Now, we just found out here that patient zero, Thomas Eric Duncan, has died of the Ebola virus at the hospital. Now, the other day, he was given an experimental drug. Obviously, that hasn't worked out too well. You know, it looks like our government is obsessed with trying to push these experimental drugs on people, and it quite frankly isn't working. You know, uh, two of the doctors who have uh, gotten the Ebola virus were given experimental drugs, but they were also given blood transfusions. Each doctor was given a separate experimental drug. I think the common factor right there would be the blood transfusion. Now, do you think the CDC is really gonna admit that? Do you think our government is gonna admit that? Negative. They wanna make money off of these drugs. They want to scare you. They want you to feel like that if you get this, you have to come to them, pay top dollar for this drug, and then the chances of you even surviving from it are slim to none. You're dead anyways. As long as they get your money, they don't care. So another thing that I find extremely crazy about the CDC, day in and day out, they keep coming on TV and saying, hey, you've got nothing to worry about. We're professionals. We got your back. Well, this is how they have our back. The daughter, the stepdaughter of the patient zero uh, has been in contact helping uh, him at his apartment in Dallas since day one of him showing the signs and symptoms. She's checked on him since the Thursday all the way until Sunday until he was taken to the hospital. So she sat there in the apartment with all that while he's vomiting, he's uh, using the bathroom, all that stuff, sweat, she touched the sheets, everything. And so what has the CDC been saying since day one? There's a 21 day incubation period. So for 21 days at any time in that period, you on the 21st day could all of a sudden start showing signs and symptoms, coughing, having flu-like symptoms, very high fever, all that. So why is it now the 14th day and just a few days ago, she was cleared by the CDC to return to work. She's a healthcare worker. She works at a hospital. Thank God she is smart enough to know that she hasn't waited that entire 21 day period and she's saying she's not gonna go back to work. But the CDC, the people who are in charge, the ones that tell us every day that they have our back, the ones who are professionals, that they know science, they're saying that she's good to go back. Meanwhile, everyone else is still quarantined. And she's been around him more. I mean, what does that say? Another thing to think about, the kids, there was five kids who were in contact with patient zero that went to four different schools. They were at those schools for a while. The parents in that area had to pull those kids out of there because they were scared for their child's safety. Wouldn't you be? But what's funny is, is if you have Ebola or you've been in contact with someone who has Ebola, the CDC's not really that worried about it. They're gonna wait until you possibly start showing signs and symptoms and then they'll take care of it. Meanwhile, if you refuse to get a flu shot, you'll be told you can't be at school. Ebola, okay. Flu shot, mm, we don't want you around our kids. You might get something. People say that you shouldn't be scared. The CDC is saying that there's nothing to worry about. I, I pretty much would have to say I disagree with that. I think you should be scared because these government bureaucrats who are supposed to have our back, who are supposed to be uh, having our best interests in mind, the ones who are supposed to be professional, the scientists who are experts on all of this, that say that they know what's going on, that there's nothing to be scared about. That's what's scary, is the fact that their ego's so big, 
that they can't admit the fact that there is an issue and that they aren't well prepared for it. We know that, that they're not well prepared for it because they haven't trickled down the information that hasn't trickled down the ladder to the lowest people in the hospitals. But they want to tell you that you're going to be okay. And it's just, it's something that you have to take into your own consideration. You've got to wash your hands. You've got to make sure that you're being mindful of the people you talk to, what you're doing, the things that you're touching, not touching your mouth. Keep some hand sanitizer in your pocket and just be safe. Watch our reports and continue to get information on this as it happens. I'm Joe Biggs with Infowars.com. I began to get into iodine a few years ago because it was helping me and my family so much get healthy and detoxify. I believe our research is conclusive. This is the best iodine out there. And I know this for a fact, nobody else has got iodine based on these pure crystals, ladies and gentlemen. For a limited time, experience the ancient power of Survival Shield X2. Take advantage of this unprecedented 30% off super detox special at InfoWarsLife.com. Introducing the first proprietary oxygen-based intestinal cleanser, OxyPowder. Backed by FDA-approved Phase 1, 2, and 3 clinical trials, all the toxins from the air, the food, the water, ultimately ends up in the gut or affects the gut. Take your health into your own hands and start cleansing your body today with Oxy Powder. Secure your Oxy Powder today at InfoWarsLife.com. That's InfoWarsLife.com. Homeland Security saying that they believe there is an imminent threat being planned and that an attack will take place. They said that last Friday and again on Sunday in and around El Paso, the Fort Bliss Joint Task Force 6 area. I want to be clear. I'm the guy that exposes false flag. I'm the guy that officially began questioning 9-11 on the day of the event. I see comments on Infowars saying, you know, Alex, why are you saying there, there could be a real ISIS threat? Why are you know it's going to be a hoax, it's going to be a false flag? It is a false flag because ISIS has been empowered and funded by NATO and Homeland Security, and they'll use an attack to take our liberties. It does not mean there aren't jihadi nutballs that are coming to attack us. See, the media always spins it that, that a false flag means it's totally staged by the government. No. Elements of the government can fund terrorists and then let them attack. Has Rand Paul ever been to Syria? Has he ever met with I, ISIS? Has I, I, he I'm ever met with, with fight, any of these sir. people? No, no, no. I, they, we're going to have a fight because it's patently false. This is the same Rand Paul that said we didn't want to have anything to do with, with anything to do in the Middle East, by the way. I don't want to get in a fight with him at all. Yeah. But it's not true. I know these people. I'm in contact with them all the time. All right, let me and ask he you is this. Not. And he is not. I, I, Senator, and he is not. I, I mean, let's remember here. The people we are fighting today, we funded 20 years ago. And we did it because we were locked in this struggle with the Soviet Union. They invaded Afghanistan, and we did not want to see them control Central Asia. And we went to work. And it was President Reagan, in partnership with the Congress, um, led by Democrats, who said, you know what, sounds like a pretty good idea. Let's deal with the ISI and the Pakistani military, and let's go recruit these Mujahideen, and let's great. Let's get some to come from Saudi Arabia and other places, importing their Wahhabi brand of Islam so that we can go beat the Soviet Union. That's what most false flags are, is opening the door, letting it happen. Look at how the British government was in the news two days ago. It's going to, quote, retrain the jihadis coming back from Syria because huge amounts of them, tens of thousands, have come out of England. They're allowed to fly in and out. They're allowed to have Twitter and Facebook accounts. They are being protected. They're being protected here. It's in the news today in my stack that, 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 that radical Islamist terrorists are using the open borders and the open visa program. Uh, prior to last night, uh, they were it was running about 73% of the people apprehended in the Rio Grande Valley or OTMs other than Mexican. A um, lot of Central Americans, but really from all over the, the world. 
and uh, we were informed last night that that number has escalated to 80 percent. So, uh, and this is this is a fact. So most of the people that we encounter here. A larger percentage of them are people from other other countries other than Mexico. And we're not told about the special interest aliens. Uh, we have had Somalians here once they got on that special uh, uh, alien list. Uh, they won't tell us that anymore, but there have been S Somalians, India, Sri Lanka, Nepal, Chinese, uh, you name it, we've had it here. <laughs> we've also uh, uh, found evidence that people from these uh, special interest countries, in particular Pakistan and Afghanistan, Iran, um, uh, are coming through our property. Uh, during one of our Texas border volunteer operations last year, uh, we had a group of 10. Uh, we spotted, uh, we followed them, uh, informed the Border Patrol where they were going to come out on the highway. Border Patrol were not able to respond fast enough. They, got, they climbed the fence and uh, uh, loaded up and, and left and uh, were, were not caught. But as one of them was uh, climbing over the fence, he dropped uh, a package. And that package uh, was an Urdu dictionary. Urdu is a language uh, spoken in uh, Pakistan and Afghanistan. And in that uh, uh, translation book, Urdu and English, there were a lot of phrases circled and outlined. Do you speak Spanish? Do you speak English? So it's it's easier for them to slip through this private property. And uh, that's just one example. And uh, more recently, uh, uh, within the past two weeks, some Iranian money was found in a bailout vehicle. So we know they're coming in here. Besides that Iranian money being found in a bailout vehicle up here, uh, four Syrians, which is not, you know, public news yet, but four Syrians were apprehended on the Rio Grande River uh, a couple days ago. So Al-Qaeda put out an online magazine that states that they want to hit the uh, Air Force Academy. They want to hit a military academy in Georgia. They want to hit Las Vegas. And once again, uh, New York is another target as well, Times Squares. So these are very trying times. And they now this have 12 passenger jets in working order and have been photographed celebrating with them, basically saying they're going to kill us with them. We found backpacks with Korans. Another fellow found a, a backpack with a prayer rug in it. You find hypodermic needles, you find pregnancy tests, you find everything in the world in this trash. Another friend had 10 Chinese in his yard. There's Arabs coming. Uh, the Border Patrol said at one point, three out of 10 that they apprehended was OTMs other than Mexicans. There's, there's all kinds of people. This is a national security issue. Everything that you're getting on the media is a lie. We live this every day, 24 hours. And it is not secure. When we got the wall built on our ranch, it is known as a force multiplier. And immediately they deployed agents that used to patrol the border before the 10, 12, 14 foot wall. You have 18 foot wall on this side. They took agents off the border because it's a force multiplier. Uh, ISIS cells that were active uh, in the Juarez area, which is northern part of Chihuahua State, and uh, that they were moving around over there, that they had uh, um, just that there was some activity and uh, for the sheriffs along the border to be on the alert, for all law enforcement to be on the alert and to be on the lookout for these people maybe trying to come across. If they show their ugly head in our area, we'll send them to hell. And I think the United States need to get busy. And they need to bomb them. They need to take them out. Uh, I, I would like for them to hit them so hard and so often that every time they hear a propeller on a plane or a jet aircraft engine that they urinate down both legs. Now, the reason they picked Juarez could be a strategic move. This is just right across the border. Juarez is no, no more than a few miles to my left. Now we also have, you know, many other buildings in this area that we've talked about. We have the military base, FBI has an office. Do you have any information or any evidence that they're actually coming in the southern border now? 
Yes, yes. Tell I have information you know. that I, I know that at, at least 10 ISIS fighters have been caught coming across the Mexican border in Texas. There's there's nobody talking you know about that? it. There's how, there's be, how, because I've asked because I've asked the Border Patrol, Greta. And the Border Patrol, they just let ISIS uh, ISIS members come no, across they, the border. No, they uh, caught them at the border. Therefore, we know that ISIS is coming across the border. Two Central Texas men arrested on terror-related charges will both have a detention hearing tomorrow afternoon in federal court. Rahatul Khan and Michael Wolf, both 23, were arrested separately this week. They're both accused of providing support to terrorists. Is there synergy? Is there interaction? Is there a connection between the Mexican cartels and groups like ISIS? My opinion is... Uh, it, yes, there seems to be a uh, at least uh, and talking uh, to each other. How much I don't know, but they're using the drug cartels use the same operational uh, plan as terrorist groups do. People from terrorist countries, uh, uh, countries that are deemed uh, uh, special interest countries, pouring in here undetected. Uh, it's time to step up and shut the border down. Uh, we can shut the border down in Afghanistan or Iraq. Uh, that's a big priority. Our biggest priority needs to be shut down the south, the southwestern border. Well, that's it for this edition of the InfoWars Nightly News. But go to the InfoWars shop and get your order in right now for the limited edition Ebola shirt. These are coming in very soon, and you want to make sure that you have your order in when they come due. Well, that's it for this edition of the InfoWars Nightly News. I'm your host, Jakari Jackson, and we'll see you again tomorrow night. City of Austin tap water versus filtered City of Austin tap water. I can, like, taste dirt in it. God knows what's in this. This has an aftertaste. Tastes like Austin water? Yeah, it does. Ugh. These people just sampled City of Austin tap water straight from the faucet. Next, we had them try a sample of tap water filtered through the ProPure G2.0 filtration system. I call it H2O. That one is better. Tastes like nothing. Yep, I know what good water tastes like. It's good water. Most tap water contains added substances like fluoride, chlorine, Monsanto's deadly pesticide, glyphosate, and many others. Studies prove that these substances are linked to an assortment of major health issues, including tooth decay, lowered IQ, and even cancer. It tastes like you're drinking out of the lake when you're drinking tap water. It has uh, that uh, processed flavor to it. The ProPure G2.0 filtration system removes these deadly substances and many more, leaving only fresh tasting, deliciously clean water. Okay, this is very tasty. It's good water. Refreshing. It's good. <laughs> Go to InfoWarsStore.com today. Use promo code WATER and save 10% off your ProPure purchase. Again, that's InfoWarsStore.com or call 1-888-253-3139. You are watching the InfoWars Nightly News, which airs 7 p.m. Central at InfoWarsNews.com. Members can share their passcode with up to 11 other people, and your support is helping us defend liberty worldwide.